You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and joining me as he does every Monday, Lindsey Crosby, the Auburn banker himself. How, uh, how are you doing on this Monday, my friend? You know, I'm not bad. I'm not bad. Um, Auburn didn't lose this weekend, so that's nice. Uh, Georgia didn't win this weekend, so I'm all. Oh, that's nice. nice. Yeah, that's very nice. nice. You love to see it. Uh, true, true. A lot of Auburn folks not upset with the uh, the college football playoffs because we're probably going to get another Alabama Georgia championship, which is a total bummer. But hey, I-, I saw a tweet of people saying like, "All right, let's pull for the weird animals," and it was a picture of a wolverine and a picture of a bear cat. Yeah, and uh, eerily similar, both rodent looking mammals, but. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We will see what happens. But uh, first things first, let's get to the Birmingham Bowl, which is the bowl in which Auburn will be playing. Look, I know a lot of Auburn fans are not happy with this. I get it. And it seems like it was down to Birmingham or Memphis for the Liberty Bowl, and I'm sure Memphis is a much more interesting town to go to because we all can go to Birmingham whenever we want. But honestly, I'm pumped to save a lot of money on this trip. So. <laughs> And that's just me being totally selfish, but it is what it is. So Auburn will take on Houston, a ranked Houston team. I think they're 21 in the AP and uh, a team that is actually pretty good and a team that may be favored, probably will be favored going into this game. And I'm going to tell you what, Lindsay, I think Harson and this team, uh, they drew the short straw in all of this because you look at it and it's just, a seven and six team, if you win this game, isn't impressive. It doesn't sound impressive. No one's gonna like write home about it. But if you lose in six and seven, there's a big difference. A very, very catastrophically big difference if Brian Harson goes six and seven in his first season at Auburn. I mean, that's a big deal. And and people are not gonna be happy with this. So this is a this is actually a pretty important bowl game when you get down to it. Yeah, and the draw is tough. You know, Houston is 11 and two and their two losses uh, was a season over against Texas Tech right. and then they lost to in the AAC championship game to Cincinnati who is in the college football playoff so Correct. they lost two games all year and one of them was to a team in the playoff uh 37 points per game they allow 21 per game it's not the best matchup in the world it's, it, this reminds me a lot of that UCF bowl game Win, well, good job. You were expected to win. But if you lose, oh, how could you lose to that team? And, I mean, Brian Harson's got to got to make amends in a hurry. I mean, you lost four straight. You can't lose five straight in this case. Figure out what you're going to do with personnel. Figure out what you're going to do with yeah, quarterback and some other positions. And uh, let's have a good showing because you're going to need to. Right. And I've talked about this, you know, in the second half of the season – this bowl game, I was going to say, was pretty important going into it, regardless of the draw and regardless of what Auburn's record was going into it, because I wanted to see if Brian Harts can get this team to compete in a bowl game, because Gus Malzahn was not able to. We never saw that, even in the big bowl games. I mean, the the one against UCF, like you mentioned, you know, it's like, oh, okay, good, you know, big whoop if you win, but. I mean, that was a pretty big bowl game. Then, obviously, the, they went in the sugar and lost and got blown out to Oklahoma. Th- this mm-hmm. matters. Like, this is, you know, th- you're – it's a culture thing. I love talking about culture, and Harson loves it. But you've got to prove that you want to win no matter what you do. And the pride from that goes into practice, and that's the big thing about being bowl eligible is you get extra weeks of practice, and so you get to start mm-hmm. installing stuff early and kind of looking ahead. Um, but that's a big part of this is, okay, how is this team going to come out? I think they're going to come out hot. I think this team is going to want to win the football game. That's my guess. That's kind of the way I've interpreted Brian Harson's tenure so far. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Harson is excited one to get that practice. Like you mentioned, to get that time, whether it's freshman who who didn't get to play a lot, uh, you know, but just that practice time. You're going to be installing a new offensive coordinator scheme, whatever that looks like. Uh, but two, the man's a competitor. He wants to win at everything. And so, right. like you said, they're going to come out hot. The big question I have is personnel-wise is who are you going to see and who are you not going to see? Uh, TJ Finley famously finished, finished the Iron Bowl. 
uh, with a hurt ankle. Um, if if he's healthy, arguably Auburn probably wins the Iron Bowl. Uh, definitely, if Bo Nix is healthy, Auburn wins the Iron Bowl. And so, is TJ Finley going to be healthy enough to play in the bowl game? Are we going to see a backup? If we see a backup, is it going to be Grant Lloyd? Is it going to be freshman Demetrius Davis? A lot of questions there. Uh, just one, what are we planning on doing? And then two, who are we going to have? We know one of the new trends is draft eligible guys opting out of meaningless bowl games. And hey, you want to stay healthy so you can get the bag in the NFL? I can't blame you for that. Perfectly, yeah. that's that's understandable. The, we've seen time and again, like the teammates don't hold that against them. They understand what they're doing. They understand right. why they're doing it. I'm not going to hold it against them because their their teammates don't hold it against them. But it does mean you're going to see some guys put in unfamiliar situations. We know Roger McCreary is going to be a first round draft pick. Uh, right. Zach Blackerby told us that back in July. McCreary is the best corner in the draft. So if he sits out, who you know who steps up at corner? Same thing you look at with some of the linebackers, maybe. You look at, I mean, everywhere. Who who plays, who doesn't, what's our personnel look like? I'm really interested to see that. I am too. Yeah, you mentioned Roger McCreary, uh, other defensive back that, that I probably wouldn't play if I was him, Smoke Monday. Um, Zacoby McClain's an interesting one. And then uh, Derek Hall, you know, is he leaving? That, that's an interesting thing. The Owen Papo, we haven't seen him in forever. Um, so d- does he play all of a sudden? You'd have to think, you know, I kind of expected an announcement from him at this point, but we haven't seen anything yet. Then obviously, you know, we're not going to see a Bo Nix, like you said, you know, just take Bixby play. What do we know about that? We think he's coming back, but is he? We don't know. Um, and then obviously your transfer guys and the transfer guys don't really make that much of an impact as far as not playing in this game with the exception of Darius Tennyson. You know, he probably would have gotten some snaps in it. And then Sean Shivers, he would have probably had a role, but those guys are out. Sean Shivers put on his uh, his Instagram story. He was at a an Indiana Hoosiers basketball game, so maybe they're the favorite for him. I don't know, but also he just wants Sean his own. He wants his own home field shirt. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's totally it. Um, Elijah Canyon uh, and Caleb Johnson will obviously not be there too. So yeah, very very interesting to think about the personnel aspect of all of this. And how Harson manages it. Because if Finley's able to play, and he was seen with a boot on, so take that for what it's worth. There's also a story on one of the message boards that he was out playing in, a, I think it was on the Auburn subreddit, that he was playing basketball at the rec on Monday. So who who knows? Who, who knows? But I would think that TJ Finley's Auburn starter against, uh, against Houston in the mm-hmm. Birmingham Bowl, but I don't know. I don't know. I'd kind of love to see uh, Davis get a start just to see, just to see what's going on. But Harson's going to be all in on this game. He doesn't really want to take risk in this game because he wants to win it because I think he understands the, the importance of a game like this. Hey, today's show brought to you by our friends at Fetch Me Home Delivery. Lindsey Crosby, when you order something, do you want it to get there quick in a timely manner and have great customer service every step of the way? That is a prerequisite, yes. Yeah, that's something that you want. That's not something that you get everywhere but fetch me they're local they're auburn people Lindsay, and they control every step of the process if you use one of the the national brands if you have an issue how do you how do you fix it you don't don't. No, you get a refund maybe three weeks down the road but fetch me there's somebody always on staff that you can call and they're right down the road from you it's it's easy it's simple not that you're going to have any issues but still just kind of having that peace of mind that okay my family's dinner is taken care of tonight Fetch Me gets you every step of the way, and they partner with local people, um, and we love that. We absolutely love that. Hey, when you order through their free app, just search Fetch Me in your phone's app store, fetchmedelivery.com. Uh, use promo code LOCALMEAL to get some uh, some price knocked off of that, courtesy of the podcast and our friends at Fetch Me. So, yep, save money. Save money, absolutely. Also, hey, you can make some money with our friends at Prize Picks, Lindsey Crosby. We both love fantasy sports and uh, and prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. We love prize picks. We know you will too. You can bet on anything. We, uh, we're recording this Sunday evening. You can take the over on Pat Mahomes uh, passing yards and then also combine it with, I don't know if LeBron's playing tonight or not, but Le- LeBron James total rebound. I mean, there, there's all kinds of combinations that you can do and uh, it, it's worth checking out and it's really set up for you to win. So, don't hesitate. Check out prizepicks.com today. Use promo code locked on or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. 
Lindsay, we didn't get any official news for the Auburn offensive coordinator job over the weekend like I thought we would, but it seems like it's Zach Hill um, unless something crazy happens. Uh, something crazy, I mean, I don't know if something crazy is going to happen, but I've heard that Auburn compliance is involved, so you never know. Um, the The Hill choice is, he was on the short list, so you knew this was a, this was a possibility. I feel good about the fact that they've worked together before. So yeah. there is some there is some history there. It's not I know that that Harson and Bobo knew each other from the Mountain West, but they didn't have that working relationship. So knowing that you can bring somebody in who should be able to kind of easily step in and you guys can find that old groove again and then there's the, the reports that Harson's going to be a lot more directly involved with the offense kind of makes you feel like okay, he's getting his guys making his team uh guys he's familiar with and and they're going to have chemistry right away makes yeah. you feel good right yeah and, and you mentioned the compliance thing so obviously zach kill is the offensive coordinator at arizona state they've mm -hmm. been kind of mixed up with some scandal stuff in regards to a pay-to-play type thing and um yeah there uh, sounds like the report from from auburn live auburn live's been all over this justin hokinson and the guys but Sounds like Auburn's just doing their due diligence to make sure that it's okay to hire him. That's that that seems to be it. And if it goes through, I believe Hoke actually had a report that said it should be good to go by Monday at some point. So maybe right. by the time you're listening to this, if you're listening to this later in the day, it's already been decided. And of course, we'll cover that on tomorrow's show. But yeah, Zach Hill appears to be the guy. Now, there were other names that popped up over the weekend, Lindsay, that I think are interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Amy and Craig popped up which is, you know, a throwback. A throwback, yeah. Yeah, it was a wide receivers coach for a little bit. I don't think he was a very good wide receivers coach at Auburn. I know a lot of people really, really like Damian Craig. I don't think I don't think he and Harson would gel. That's just my gut feeling. I love the Auburn tie, but I, I don't like, I, I don't think he would make this team better. That's just my, yeah. that's just my hunch. I'm sure he's great. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but just the way we kind of saw that end, um, I don't know. I, I just don't really buy that. A lot of people still wanting Dale McGee. Lindsay, it sounds like a report came out that he would only leave if he was a play caller. He's not a play caller as a co-offensive coordinator at Georgia. Right. He's just their run game coordinator and then just incredible recruiter. I've seen his name the least of all the quote-unquote names on the short list. I don't think he was ever a legitimate possibility, but still people are asking about it, so we needed to talk about it. Yeah, uh, having Dale McGee and Cadillac – it's you have two guys at the same position. Obviously, like like you said, Delmagee wants to call plays. I don't know if Harson's going to be comfortable in year two not ha being heavily involved in that. We saw how it went in year one. We saw there was obviously some this you know some disapproval of how the offense was called and conducted because Bobo was let go right away. Right, and so I can totally see why Harson would not immediately jump at the idea of bringing in somebody else who you had to give play calling responsibility too. Uh, now, with the Zach Kill situation, I do want to point out, you're in the same conference as Will Wade at LSU. So if he can still have a job, I think you could probably go ahead and bring Zach Hill. And by the time you listen to this podcast, if it's if you're one of the folks who didn't have this as the first listen of your day, one, mm -hmm. what are you doing? I mean, right. what, how are you waking up if it's not Zach Blackerby? But uh, two, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. But two, you're probably going to hear he's he has the job by now. Uh, a couple things to know about him. Like we said, one, he worked with Harson. Two, right. he spells his name wrong. Um, D A K is not a responsible way to spell the name Zach. That is not kind of not somebody is an expert on the topic. I'm just letting you know. That is not how you do Zach. Uh, but like I said, you have to feel good about how quickly he should be able to integrate into what we are doing on offense and watching what some of what Arizona State has done. Uh, it looks a lot like what Auburn is trying to do as far as usage of tight ends. Mm -hmm. uh, being multiple, more of a pro style kind of system, you have to feel like it's it's going to. It may get to the point where he may be able to call get, plays by the bowl game. I mean, that's entirely reasonable. And usually, when you see offensive coordinators get hired, they're not calling plays maybe necessarily in your bowl game because they've only been there two or three weeks. Not right. saying that's for sure, but there's a possibility of it. There is, um, yeah, th that'd be an interesting thing for sure. Yeah, I think. Yeah. It's just, and and if he doesn't, it's going to be interesting to see who does call them in that scenario. Yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, you, you kind of made the crack at, at Will Wade, which I think is awesome. But when me and all my homies hate Will Wade, it's interesting that they're doing this 
that the that because when 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 we hired Bobo and then Bobo really wanted to go get Herb Hand from Tennessee. Now it's like amidst all the reports that Tennessee was, you know, giving players stuff, you know, McDonald's bags filled with money. That never came up. And I actually was surprised that no one ever asked that question of right. like, okay, this is cool. Like we can just, we can just get him kind of thing. And maybe, maybe that did happen and it just wasn't really reported or talked about. Maybe compliance did go over that. I, I'm not sure, but that went through my mind when I read the report is like, is coordinator different than offensive line coach? And it may be, and it may be position coaches are so down the, down the ladder. It doesn't matter, but that did cross my mind. I don't know. All right. Uh, today's show brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered all season for more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues the march to the playoffs in the NFL. And it's officially bowl season. Be sure to check out all the lines at betonline.ag. It's a great time to get in on the action. Hey, and you can get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code locked on, L O C K E D O N, to receive your. Bonus. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. Also, today's show brought to you by the best tasting protein bar ever, Built Bar. Built Bars are delicious. They are covered 100% in chocolate. And Lindsey Crosby, they are good for you. What a great combination. And so be sure to check out our friends at Built.com. They're running deals right now uh, for the holiday season. And they've also got a ton of new flavors being featured every few days. So be sure to check that out. Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off of your order. And if you're watching on YouTube, Lindsey Crosby at the website right now, like the great person. I'm going to eat all of this stuff. So uh, you good. Should. You should. You absolutely should. It's great. White chocolate cheesecake? Come on. So good. Right. right. Now, you mentioned a new coach coming in, um, which maybe it's Zach Hill. It seems like it will be Zach Hill. And watching watching the uh, the bowl game. And I just remember last year when all, in Auburn's bowl game, the camera would show Brian Harson, like whenever, um, whenever Auburn like did something bad, and he just looked so disappointed the whole time. Like it was really hard to watch. I, did, I remember recording a podcast after that and being like, "Yo, I, I didn't love that." I mean, he's just sitting there. He's like, he can't do anything, and it's like, "Oh, maybe I've got so much to fix." Is kind of the what he had on his face. Um, I don't know. I wonder if the offensive coordinator will uh, will be in a similar situation. You know, it it's something where part of me thinks that the offensive coordinator, if he, if, assume it is that kill, um, if he's not calling plays, you have to wonder, do you try to help or do you just stay completely away from everything? And I think, I think in that situation, you probably try to still be involved. It may be something where like, you're not calling plays, but you're on the sideline. You're talking to guys yeah. as they come off the field. Hey, what did you see? You know, what were you looking at? What, were your, what was your thought? Pro- you know, you're coaching guys up versus something like Harson's coming into the whole program brand new. He's just watching, and that had to be a tough feeling for those players, especially those players who knew they were coming back for 2021, and they're like, "Oh man, I just whiffed on that block. I bet you, Coach Harson saw that. Am I going to get playing time next year?" So I imagine that. A little bit of the struggles in the bowl game last year was probably part of that. But I fully expect whoever is calling plays, whether it's the new OC, whoever it may be, whether it's Eric Keesaw, whether it's Harson himself, I fully expect this team to come out fired up, to come out ready to go, and to co- and planning on coming out and making a statement. I mean, we know that obviously 6-6 six and six is not where they thought they would be finishing when they right. were 6-2. and two. Um Playing Alabama as close as they did kind of showed, okay, we have the talent to hang with. I mean, Alabama is the number one team in the nation. And to be to be toe-to-toe four overtimes with the number one team in the country uh, and then have only lost five guys to the transfer portal. And for the most part, guys that were, I'm not going to say expendable, but guys that you're not heartbroken to lose, maybe with the exception of Ladarius Tennyson. You kind of thought he had a little bit of, of potential for playing. I loved his up. upside. I still do. Yeah. I think whoever gets him is going to get a really good player. But but to have not a whole lot of people leave, um, and then to show the fight that you showed, especially in the in the Iron Bowl, has to make you feel good. And really, this bowl game needs to go well for Auburn. It needs to not just be a cover, but a win, so that they can set the tone to go into spring practice, uh, conditioning, 
signing day, all of that. So I look for them to have a good game, whoever it is calling plays. Don't know who it is. Uh, and you have to think that they're going to try to use that opportunity to bring in some more players, some transfers in, because they get now they get five transfers in if they have five going out. Um, you just kinda, you kind of have to think that this is well, going to be only, a bigger that only deal applies, for them. That only applies if you hit seven, and then you get seven. So we have to cycle two guys is what you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually am I'm unfamiliar with the rule regarding the time frame. I think it's through the end of the year. So I think like I think it's through the end of the academic year. So they can leave after spring. I think. I, I need to get that confirmed soon because that's obviously a big a big point. But um, but yes, I I mean I, I think every school is gonna get to at least seven. I think that's kind of the way it's gonna work. So um but yeah, I mean, you mentioned you mentioned Auburn standing in, uh, against the Alabama offense in the Iron Bowl, and I think it kind of made every Auburn fan. It's weird that I'm about to say this, but watching Alabama just absolutely cook on offense against Georgia, against the quote unquote greatest defense of all time, and Auburn's defense looked way better, significantly oh, yeah. better than Georgia's, and it's like I don't. It's odd because an Alabama success made Auburn fans feel better, but I think it's true. I think it's made uh, what Derek Mason did. And, you know, I mean, there's rumors of who was calling plays and who did the scheme and all that, but that defense was incredible compared to, you know, what Georgia was on Saturday. Yeah. Um, if, if Auburn has that defense all season, Auburn's record looks a lot better than six and six. Auburn's probably a 10 and two or nine and three team. Um, I would really love to know. I mean, that that's going to be a question we're going to ask for a while. Was that Derek Mason? Was that somebody else? We've heard the rumors. You alluded to it that it was Jeff Schmetting calling the plays. Um, I don't. I'd can, like to think. Can if I tell that you my response case. to that, Lindsay? Yes. Do you ahead. mind knowing the kind of guy that Harson is? If it was Jeff Schmetting that did that, he would fire Derek Mason. Yeah. That was what I was about to say was Derek Mason would not still be here if Jeff Schmetting was calling plays and not Derek Mason. If yeah, like Bobo left, you would have seen Mason thing. leave too. Yeah, I mean, it could be true, but I don't think it is for that one simple reason. Yeah, I feel like if if you took play calling responsibilities away from Mason going into the 12th game of the season, yep. then he would have left when Bobo left. So Mason called those plays. Um, I could see something where in the bowl game you gave somebody else play calling responsibility for a quarter or something to see how things would go, or maybe even the game, but not in the twelfth game of your season. So Mason called those plays. Um, great defensive plan. I don't know what took them so long to adjust what they were doing to run, you know, more man to run more four man, you know, four man rushes and then blitz like they did. Uh, obviously worked. Didn't work as well for Georgia. Uh, you hate to see it. Yeah, you hate to see it. Yeah, you, you hate to see it. But at the same time, you kind of love to see it. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love that their hot shot Jordan Davis just disappeared. I love that. That was great. Um, I do. I do have a question about uh Georgia's tight end. Uh, can we have him? Can we have Bowers on our team? Uh, it, it it, it kind of felt like he was their only offense in the SEC championship. <laughs> Um, it was just throw it up, just throw it up. Bowers is down there somewhere. And I mean, he was good. He was very good. He is good. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was so, I hate to be this dude, but I'm going to be yeah. that guy right now. It was so nice to see Stetson Bennett be exposed. That was so nice. Where it's like, okay, the game is on your shoulders. Quarterback carry the offense. Oh, you can't. You can't do that. You have to have all these incredibly expensive and nice toys around you, and you can't do it. So that was nice to see. For me, it was nice to see us handle a team and then somebody else have a harder time with that team. Because if, you know, we saw, and we talked about this a couple times this season, where whatever quarterback plays against Auburn on Saturday, we're going to make them look like a Heisman Trophy winner. Like, they're going to they're gonna play really well. Mm -hmm. um, and to go out there and handle Alabama's offense like we did, and then to see Georgia struggle with it was that little bit of validation for me. Uh, yeah. I've been saying this all season. There's no moral victories in, in college football, in the SEC West. There's no moral victories, but there are silver linings. And the silver lining to me was watching mm -hmm. Georgia's defense struggle to contain the same offense that we did contain right. 
gives me some confidence that maybe our coaching staff does know what they're doing. Maybe these players are better than what they showed at times this season. And the potential is there uh, to, to be more consistent on a week to week basis. We just have to get that out of these players. And I don't know what it takes to do that, but we've, we've shown the flashes of it. The big question for me is going to be offensively. What do we look like next year? Um, You know, I have a, I have an idea of the base level the defense can reach. We've seen their potential in the Alabama game, but I have an idea of what their base level could be. What does this offense look like next year? What players do we bring in from the portal? Offensive linemen, wide receivers is what I'm thinking about. Uh, that can make this team more consistent on offense and give them more options where we're not stuck into just passing because we can't run or we're, we're not stuck just running because our receivers can't catch the ball. That's the big thing for me, and we're just not going to know that for a little while. I feel so much better about the offense next year than the defense, so that's funny. Really? Yeah, I think you're losing like everything on the defense. You're losing Roger. You're losing Smoke. Sure. Um, you're losing probably, we don't know yet, but you're probably losing your whole linebacking core, the big three. Probably, yeah. Uh, and you're going to lose some guys on the defensive front. So I think that's a bigger deal. With offense, you get a quarterback back. Whether One it's of the two. Or TJ. Um, you get all of your receivers, but you lose Robertson. But I feel like that's pretty replaceable. No, no disrespect to him, but uh, at this point, all the receivers are bowl invite. So props to him. But you know, they they all come back, Lindsey, and I think yeah. that's a big deal. I think it's a really big deal. And you're going to be able to go and get. I think you only need. I think Auburn has a bunch of number two and number three receivers. And I think yeah. if you get that that true number one, I don't know where you get them, but I think if you get that true number one everyone else gets instantly better because then they they can be kind of better in their role. Um, and then, you know, with, with running backs, I think Auburn's solid there. So I don't – and the offensive line, it's like, okay, all right. So you bring in some, some experience in other places. So I, I'm not too discouraged by that just because I think at worst it's the same. I mean, once again, no disrespect to the offensive line, but I think at worst it's the same level as we saw in 2021. Okay, that's a that's a good way to look at it. I I I think part of me had not necessarily been thinking about as many early entrants as we're probably going to have, especially from the defense. That's something where, you know, benefit of the doubt. We love Auburn. and we think oh, guys want to be here. I hadn't I was like I hadn't thought about how much we could be losing from all three levels of the defense. Um, I mean, we don't know about Derek Hall yet. We talked true. about that a second ago. Oh, and Col- Col- Colby Col- Wooden, Colby Wooden is a draftable player. He's probably right a, a day two pick. Um, I mean, so, I mean, that's a big part of your pass rush, what we saw. What happens with TD Moultrie? I think he has a COVID year left, to my understanding, but I thought this go. was his COVID year. It may be. He may be a super senior then. So, yeah. So, Tony Fair is definitely gone as well. Um, How fitting is it that Tony Fair gets to end his career in Birmingham? How fitting is that? I didn't think about that, but yeah, I guess so. That's yeah. how many plays. Yeah. I have no, I, I see, see the reason why he wouldn't play. I mean, it's not like you look at Tony Fair and he's screaming, you know, high draft pick right now. You want that last game to solidify your status. Um, as far as guys opting out, I mean, if you think about it, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about Roger McCreary. Feels like he's a pretty good safe bet to opt out simply because what? Selfishly, I want him to opt out because I think it's better for Auburn long term if Fro Torrance gets a full game. Yeah, like make make these guys – feel what it's like to play without that safety net of Roger McCreary. Uh, but like Roger yeah, probably, I, I ought to- see, I, I, I'm sorry. I keep cutting you off. I'm usually pretty good about that. I, I, I want to see the combo of Roe Torrance and Jalen Simpson out there. I want to see what that looks like. Switch in Nehemiah as well. See what that mm-hmm. looks like. Um, I, I think that's important. I think that could be a really, uh, a really valuable few weeks getting those guys to gel together. And then having Donovan Kaufman and Zion Puckett next to one another, at safety, mm-hmm. I think would be good. We saw a lot of rotation back there, it felt, it felt like. And a right. lot of it was those two guys replacing each other or one moving to a different position to accommodate the other. So getting both those guys on the back end, practice time together with the communicating, I think is going to be big. So Yeah, you, if, and moving Donovan from nickel to safety, assuming safety. you do that, do you put Pritchett at nickel? What does that look like? You know, you get a few weeks to kind of – get that mental image uh, of, you know, kind of what it could look like going into 2022. So it's almost better if these guys leave, especially the linebacker position, you know, I was get, get, yeah, give, give Wesley Steiner, give him a month 
as a starting linebacker just to kind of get that rep. Yeah, I mean, those guys, we saw so few snaps in, of linebackers who were not in that big three. Right. And so we need those guys behind them to get more to get more more practice time, more reps together, build that chemistry. It really felt like we had intentions of rotating more at linebacker and then game scripts just never really worked out that way. Mm -hmm. We had a very shallow rotation when one of the conversation points was we have all this depth anchored by these three senior, you know, these three upperclassmen and then we just never saw that. So get those younger guys a chance to play next to one another. It may work out well if they if they do opt out. I selfishly kind of want to just see Zucobi McLean wreck some people one more time because uh, he's he's from Valdosta. I'm from Valdosta. We, I, I kind of want to just see it one last time. Y'all are friends. Uh, you know, Y'all hang yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my high school beat his high school in football. It's great. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. He could beat me. It's fine. Um, so... It's going to be good if they do opt out, uh, simply because it gives it gives our 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 coaches have a better idea of who can do what and mm -hmm. where do you need to go find impact transfers. Uh, I did look at that. It does say academic term, the term, not the year. So it is guys who leave in the fall you can replace. So I don't necessarily know what the time frame is on that, but the rule says first term. Mm. So interesting to kind of see how that works. What's the date? Is, the, is yeah. the date before classes start second semester? Is the date somewhere during the holiday? You would assume it's when classes start for, for the spring semester just because of when bowl games are. But I don't know. Like if they're still enrolled in classes and when spring starts, are they no longer counted in that count of seven mm -hmm. or whatever? So right. interesting to see. It, it will be. It will be. Lindsay, how can people find you and hear you, buddy? I am at Auburn Banker on all the socials and in our Discord, and you can listen to me 7 to 9, Monday through Friday, on News Talk W-A-N-I. I'm on Twitter at Z Blackerby. The show's on Twitter at Locked on Auburn, and on Instagram at Auburn Podcast. We'll be back tomorrow right here on Locked on Auburn. Locked on Auburn.